Hey guys, this is Josh from Relief Dev, where we explain programming questions as simple and concise as we can. Today we'll be talking about the problem O nodes distant K in binary tree. This is a popular question asked by Amazon, Facebook, and Google. We're given a binary tree with a root node root, a target node, and an integer value k. The goal is that we want to return a list of all value of nodes that are k away from our given target node. And the answer can be returned in any order. So what does that mean? In example one, let's just say we're given this tree. Our target is five, and then our k is two, meaning that we want to find all nodes that are two away from our target node. In this example, that is from five, and two away from it is if you go down two, you can get seven and you get four, but you can also go up to three and then down one to one, and that would be our other input. In all binary tree problems, if we wanna solve them, we have to use recursion. Now remember our target and that we have two ans three answers, which is seven, four, and one, because they are a distance of two away from our target. Like all binary tree problems, we start from our node and then we explore the left child and our right child until we find our target node. Once we find our target node, we actually have to start doing something more complicated. Because this problem requires us to find the k distance, not just of child nodes, we also have to find possible k distance of parent nodes, we need to do a couple things. The simple part is we need to continue searching downwards to see if we have k nodes apart. So what we might do is we would just search down here. So this is plus one, this is plus one. And then we just pass a number down and we continue incrementing it. So plus two and two. Whenever we had a value that equals our k value, then we know we had an answer. So that's how we find seven four. What's more interesting though is how do we go back up? Because binary trees only have a link to their child nodes, not back up to their parent. So what we have to do is we have to pass a value back up to our parent nodes and then explore the left and right child to see if we hit our k equals two. So from here, we pass in one. So at this point we have one. And then we have two things we can do once we're back at three. We can first explore, because we have something that's not invalid, we actually have, specifically we have one. We can explore the other node, which means we, since we came from left, we want to go to the right. And we go down right and we add two and that would give us an, our other answer. The second thing we can do once we're back at node three is that we can take our existing one value and pass it back to its parent, uh, specifically increment our one and change it to two and pass it back up. Unfortunately, three is the parent node of this whole entire tree, so there is no other answer. And that is the high level intuition of how we can get the answer to this problem. To formalize what we just discussed, for our recursion problem, we have our base case and our recursive case. We have two base cases here. The first base case is if our node that we're traversing becomes null. For example, if we were to go right instead of left first, eventually we'll reach a null node right here, and then we just return negative one because we have to turn something back. Our second edge case is when our node is equal to our target. And this is what we saw in our high level walkthrough. We go left and then we eventually find our target five. And then when this happens, we have two things we want to do. First, we want to explore downwards to find all the k distant nodes. And that downward brought us to seven and four. The second thing is we want to percolate or just pass back one so we can find all the k distant nodes that are above. And that's what we did over here. We passed one up. And that brings us to our recursive case. We did the first thing where we explored the left tree for a target. That's when we were back up here at three. So now we pass back one from our five, which is a target. So we get something that's not equal to negative one, which is our null case. Then we want to search the right tree. Specifically, we pass down our current one value plus another one, and that'll give us two. And then once we reach one, we, we hit an answer and we can add that to our answer list. The second thing we can do in our recursive case is that we would also pass the value back up so that we can potentially find any parent node that might be equal to two. 
which in this example, there's no parent node. The next step is after exploring the left tree, we can also explore the right tree and do the exact same thing. The only difference is when we don't get a negative one value, instead of searching the right tree, we now search a left tree with our value to see if we can find a k distant node. And then we do the exact same thing and we pass the value back up to its parent node. Otherwise, if our left and right node did not find our target node, we just return negative one and we continue searching. The runtime of this algorithm is O of N because at the end of the day, worst case scenario, we'll explore everything in the tree. The space-time complexity of this problem is also O of N because potentially, depending on the size of the tree, worst case scenario, we might have a situation where every node is our answer. So we have to store every single one of the nodes. Now in the live coding section, the first thing I want to do is I want to create some field states to save the given inputs that we have so we don't have to pass it down every single time. After defining our fields and calling our recursive function, we would get the answer and then we would return it. So now let's define our helper function. As we discussed, we have two base cases and a recursive case. In our base case, if our node is null, specifically meaning we travel all the way down to the bottom of our leaf nodes, we return negative one because we didn't find a target. Now, if our node equals our target node, that means we must have found the node, which in this example is over here, and we want to search downward, which is another helper function, to find all nodes that are k distance apart. And we start with zero in our current node, otherwise we have to do a search down left with a one starting value and a search down right with a one starting value. And after we search all of the nodes that are below our target, we just return one back up so we can start finding any nodes from the parent and its other child to see if we can find any k distant nodes. Now let's define a recursive case. So in our recursive case, we first check our left node to see if we can find the target value, which we do. And so our, now if our left value is not negative one, meaning that we did not hit a null case when recursing through our left tree, and we must have actually hit a target, the value we get is the distance that we are currently away from our target node. So in this example, that would be one. So our three would be one away from five. And then now if our left value that we received is equal to k, that means that the current node we are at is an answer. Otherwise, if it's not, then we just search the right subtree and we would pass our value plus one. And of course we haven't defined this yet, but we'll do that later. Otherwise we would increment our left by one and then pass it back up to the parent. We do the exact same thing with the right tree, except instead of exploring the right node, we would explore the left node. And then otherwise, if we don't have any answers, we just return negative one because that means we have not encountered our target node yet. Now let's define our search down helper function. This helper function is just a, another recursive function. It's very similar to our previous recursive function, where we have two base cases, one where we are at null, one where our distance equals k, and then finally our recursive case where we just continue exploring down until we hit our k or null. And then the recursive case where we continue exploring the left and right subtree until we hit one of our base cases. And that's it for this problem. Let's quickly walk through it. All right, so we start our root node three and we just pass it down and go to our helper function. Three is not null, so we don't do it. So we don't enter our first base case. Three is also not our target, so we don't enter that base case either. 
And so we enter our recursive case. So the first thing we do is we explore our left node. So we go to five. And then at this level, we check again, is five null? No. Is five equal a target? Yes, it is. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go down again, starting with a value of zero, and see if we can find any nodes that is k away from our target. So we start here at zero. In our search down method, our current node five is not is not null, so we don't return. It's also not equal to our distance, so we don't add it to our answer. And so we just continue searching. The first thing we do is we search our left subtree, which is with, with the distance of one. It doesn't hit in our base case, so we explore its left and its right, which is both null. And so we have not found any valid answer over here. And we just return back up. And then back at five again, we try searching the right node and we hit two. Now at two, we would search its left and its right, and we get seven, which is two distance away, so it hits our base case, and we would add it into our answer map. Then we go back up, and we try searching our right subtree, which will be, which is four, and is also two distance apart, so we add that back up. And at this point, we've tried every single possibility, and then we finish our search down helper function. Now back in our base case at five, where we found our target value, we need to pass back up to the parent its length away from the target node, which in this instance is one. We pass that back up. And so we exit out of our left of our helper function with the value of one. And because one over here is not equal to negative one, that means we found a, our target node and we need to see if we can find any other nodes that is k away from it. If our left is the same as our k value, in this instance it's not, so we enter our else case and we search the other node. We came from our left node, so we search our other subtree, which is our right subtree. So we go down here with passing two, and then we do our search down method again, except in this instance we found our base case already, where our distance is the same as k, and so we add one into our answer list, and then we go back up. Now, since we finished looking at all of our left cases, we just check the parents. We don't we don't bother checking the right node at this point because we really know guaranteed that there's only one target, and that target is from the left subtree. However, if we let's say we didn't find it, we would try searching our right subtree to see if we can find the answer, and we basically do the exact same logic. And then finally, if neither our left or our right subtree found anything, we just return negative one because clearly whatever subtree that we are at, like let's say if we went right instead first, it does not have our target answer as a child. And that's basically it. Let's submit our problem. And there you go. This is how we would solve the all nodes distant k in binary tree problem. It's an interesting problem that tests your ability to search down on nodes and then percolate values back up. If you have a firm understanding of this, you should have a good grasp of handling any sort of binary tree problems. Now, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, consider liking and maybe even subscribing for our daily updates. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video and have a great day.